Coca-Cola is one of the most iconic drinks in history, enjoyed across multiple generations and countries all over the world. The beverage is so popular that 3.1% of all soft drinks consumed around the world are Coca-Cola products. From the classic Coca-Cola to Diet Coke, Coke Zero, and caffeine-free Coke, there's something for everyone. But have you ever wondered how such an iconic beverage came to be? And more importantly, how it's remained a fan favorite for so long? Well, today, we'll take you through a step-by-step -step process of how Coca-Cola is made. So take a seat and let's dig in. The average person is reported to consume at least one Coca-Cola product once in four days and about 92 per year. But how did Coca-Cola get here? Well, it all started with a man named John Pemberton, an American Civil War veteran who had a medical degree and a morphine addiction. Pemberton had to find a way to apply his skills to create a perfect product that could help other war veterans and generally ill people cope. So he came up with Pemberton's French wine coca nerve tonic, which had a very heavy caffeine dosage that came from the African cola nuts used in the recipe. The problem was, the French wine coca nerve tonic was really bitter and quite expensive, so only the wealthy could benefit from its great features. Then in 1886, some places in America began passing prohibition laws that criminalized the making and consumption of alcoholic beverages. Pemberton saw his chance to create a non-alcoholic, cheaper and sweeter version of his French wine coca nerve tonic, and he didn't waste any time going to the drawing board. Within a few months, Pemberton had created a new carbonated drink called Coca-Cola. Basically a watered-down, non-alcoholic version of the earlier product. Coca-Cola was initially sold at 5 cents per glass. Interestingly, it was initially marketed as a drug that could cure everything from morphine addiction to indigestion, nerve disorders, headaches, and even impotence. Pemberton was really trying to get people to buy his product for literally any reason they could think of. Today, we buy a Coke because we need a chilled drink. But back then, a doctor might have prescribed a bottle of Coca-Cola for your throbbing headache. Anyway, let's now get into the production process of Coca-Cola. What gives it that signature caramel color? What gives it that sweet, crisp taste? The key ingredients in making Coca-Cola include sucrose or high-fructose corn syrup, carbonated water, caramel color, caffeine, natural flavorings, and phosphoric acid. Each ingredient is sourced from the highest quality suppliers and tested to meet high Coca-Cola quality standards. The high fructose corn syrup is made by mixing enzymes with corn syrup to convert some glucose into a simple sugar called fructose. Fructose, or fruit sugar, is a naturally occurring sugar in berries and fruits. So high fructose corn syrup has more fructose than the regular glucose found in corn syrup. This is why it's preferred, as it acts as a sweetener that gives Coca-Cola its delicious taste. Next, we have the caramel that gives Coca-Cola its signature color. The caramel is made by heating sugar until it caramelizes. A very specific quality of sugar is used to create this caramel, because it has to give Coca-Cola the same color every time. So, special care is taken to ensure the measurements remain precise. Caffeine is added to the recipe to give it a stimulating effect. However, there are debates over whether the current version of Coca-Cola contains cola nut extract. Then we have phosphoric acid which is added to the ingredients to give the Coca-Cola a slightly acidic taste. This balances the sweetness of the high fructose corn syrup used in making the beverage. It also gives the drink a certain level of tartness, reduces the growth of bacteria and fungi, and improves the shelf life. Coca-Cola uses a range of natural flavorings to achieve the iconic taste we all know and love. But the exact composition of these natural flavorings is a closely guarded trade secret. The company maintains the secrecy of its recipe by shipping ingredients to its syrup factories in anonymous merchandises numbered 1 to 9. The company provides the proportions and mixing procedure for each of these merchandise, but that's about all the information it releases. However, people have suggested that the natural flavorings comprise of vanilla, cinnamon, lime, and a blend of essential oils such as orange, lime, lemon, and lavender. Besides the main ingredients, Coca-Cola uses different additives to produce the drink including preservatives, stabilizers, and flavor enhancers. These give Coca-Cola a longer shelf life and prevent the quality from depreciating. The secrecy of the exact components of Coca-Cola's syrup is both to protect the integrity of the product and a marketing strategy, as it adds an air of mystique to the iconic drink. The quality of the ingredients sets Coca-Cola apart from other soft drinks, 
and the company takes adequate measures to ensure all its production sites follow rigorous quality standards. The production process of Coca-Cola is complex and lengthy, carefully designed to ensure consistency in all Coca-Cola products. From the mixing and carbonation to the bottling and quality control, every step is monitored to ensure every bottle of Coca-Cola tastes just as good as the last. At this stage, it's important to know that the production and distribution of Coca-Cola is done through a franchising model. This means that Coca-Cola licenses the mixing, bottling, and distribution of the final product to its bottlers all over the world, who often hold Coca-Cola franchises for one or more geographical areas. With this model, the Coca-Cola company only produces syrup concentrate. The company then sells this syrup concentrate to bottlers, who create the final drink by mixing it with filtered water and sweeteners, packaging it in designated bottles or cans, and carbonating it. The bottlers are also responsible for distributing Coca-Cola to retail vendors, vending machines, restaurants, and food service distributors. Although the Coca-Cola company holds shares in some of its franchises, almost half of the world's Coca-Cola is produced by independent bottlers who are allowed to sweeten the product according to local tastes. So, if you've drunk Coca-Cola in two different countries and noticed a significant change in taste, you're not crazy. Some countries prefer sweeter Coca-Cola, while others don't. So, when the syrup arrives at the bottling company, the factory workers transfer it to large mixing tanks where it's mixed with water. This step is important because it determines how sweet or concentrated every bottle of Coca-Cola produced in that factory will turn out. The syrup and water are continuously stirred to ensure they're properly blended. Once this stage is complete, it's now time for carbonation. Carbonation involves adding carbon dioxide to the mixture to give it that signature fizz. A bottle of Coca-Cola wouldn't be as exciting to drink if it didn't have that fizz we all love. However, the carbonation process is also carefully controlled, so the level of carbonation is the same across all the products. Once carbonation is completed, the Coca-Cola is ready for consumption. But of course, it still has to be bottled and labeled. The bottling process is highly automated, with different machines working together to fill up the bottles precisely. The bottles are thoroughly cleansed and sanitized first. Then they're hooked to machines called fill jet machines, which are the standard machines for filling carbonated and soft drinks. These machines can fill up to 50,000 bottles or cans per hour. The amount of liquid to be poured inside each bottle is already predetermined, so there's no room for errors like underfilling or overfilling a bottle. Next, the bottles or cans are tightly sealed to prevent leakages. When the bottling is done, the drinks move to the quality control stage. The production process involves a lot of testing and quality control all through the way, but the final product also has to be tested to ensure it meets safety standards. First, a taste test is done to taste the flavor profile. Every batch must have a consistent taste and flavor. There's also a visual test to check for the flavor and ensure it's the approved standard. Then the bottles or cans are tested for leakages, swelling, or any other defects. Finally, the Coca-Cola is packaged into crates and loaded onto trucks that distribute them to retailers, suppliers, or food service businesses. And that brings us to the end of the production process of Coca-Cola. Now you know how much care goes into producing every bottle of Coca-Cola you sip from. So, what's your favorite Coca-Cola product? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this.